Welcome to this special webinar hosted by Charvet. I am Jean-Jacques Ogagnard, the president here at Charvet's headquarters in Charavin, France. Uh, as chefs, you are the import, most important people to us, as you are the ones that use the products we create and build. And we really rely on you to ensure that our designs evolve and develop to meet your needs. Thank you for joining us during these difficult times. I hope you enjoy what we have to show you and we look forward to receiving your feedback on our current product range. So don't hesitate to let us know what you would like from Charlet in your kitchens in the future. Please stay safe and healthy. And once again, thank you for your time. We had the announcement of three stars. It's been absolutely fantastic. Really happy with it. Overjoyed, even. Um, it's one of the best things I think anyone can achieve in their career. Um, you know, Claire's talked about it a lot. It's very much like winning the World Cup. Um, and so, kind of, we've been sort of on cloud nine, um, not being able to fully uh, celebrate it because of the current climate. But we will do it at some point. We had a big chat with the team. Um, where we had a big Zoom call on the night, which was fantastic. They were over the moon, really excited, some of them really emotional. They've all put a hell of a lot of work into this, and that's a big part of it. Um, and then, yeah, we just can't wait to welcome our guests back, our friends, get them coming into the restaurant and just carry on and, you know, uh, make this, you know, be being part of this industry is that fantastic part. Um, and a big thing I've been talking about to a lot of our suppliers and producers and farmers is that a big part of this whole you know three Michelin stars amazing restaurants and things like that is them they're the amazing people they produce amazing products and um, we need to support the UK we need to work with them um, and sort of even more showcase it so hopefully this will bring that on to me personally um, with uh, core achieving three Michelin stars it's been, you know, a kind of lifelong goal of being part of something like that. Always through all of my career, we've been talking to friends, colleagues in the industry about trying to find those restaurants that achieve something that's kind of that kind of holy grail, I suppose. And we've done it, you know, working at a restaurant Gordon Ramsay was fantastic and being part of it. Um, but then now being part of the team that's helped the restaurant achieve three stars, it's just, it means everything really. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think uh, it's a great motivation. Um, I think this whole year or last year was very much quite a negative thing. And what we need to constantly come out of it is positivity. Our industry needs to worry less about negativity, more about what we're pushing forward, not worrying about all the things that we think aren't right, because they will eventually sort themselves out. It's looking at the positives, moving things forward in the right direction, never looking back in a bad way, looking back and just learning from it and moving things forward and being excited, um, inspired. You know, now it's another English restaurant, another female uh, English person winning this amazing award. And it, it's kind of what we need to now all aspire to. Hopefully it'll inspire more people to get into this industry. So I think people are a little bit worried, a little bit hesitant about coming into hospitality. I think it still is a fantastic industry. It is a brilliant industry. We need more people in it. We need young people because there is such a such a chance for people to get the, you know, great levels, there's great career pros prospects, everything. I think the team's generally had a good time to rest, uh, recuperate, but also I think it's kind of got us in a mood of kind of really wanting to get back, really wanting to drive for everything that we've now coming back to. And it's, um, we've used it for a lot of learning, development, 
Um, and that's more within the team because we have to keep them motivated and keep them moving forward. At this moment in time, there everyone's career is kind of stopped for the moment because we can't work, we can't progress, we can't, as young chefs, they can't move sections and develop themselves. But what we're able to do with the core, we're challenging them constantly to do projects over Zoom. We're doing presentations. We have meetings with some uh, with other suppliers, with farmers, producers. So the team really get to learn and get something from this period. Um, and then we've just started our core at home, which means every two weeks we're doing a menu box or a menu that people get to have in their own home. And we've tried really, really hard to make sure they get in that kind of core experience as close as it can be. Um, obviously being in their own home and the team have really kind of taken that on board and you've seen when they've been through all this period of not being in the kitchen that's what they do we're very lucky as chefs to be um, they're in a job that we love and enjoy so the guys they just want to be in they want to be touching food seeing product and what we've been able to do especially with core at home is we've been able to create this real bond with the team that maybe they wouldn't have been able to create um, in a slightly more stressful environment. So they've really got to know each other a lot more, um, great friendships, even better friendships. Um, and then also being able to kind of see different techniques, see also different sections. So for example, there's some of our young apprentices, they're there and normally they'd be doing more of the kind of menial tasks so that when they come through the kitchen, they're then ready to take on the bigger roles. Well, they're able to get involved in those roles. So whether it comes to prepping the fish, looking at how that happens, looking at some of the meat preparations, the cooking techniques, those kind of things, which they wouldn't get for maybe a year or so, they're getting right now hands-on experience, which is benefiting them massively. Um, I think it's a real, um, like I said, a great thing to be able to kind of change what you do, adapt and um, be entrepreneurial to create these money making opportunities to keep the staff employed to keep everything going but i think as what we're trying to do with our careers and also with the restaurant that's not what we're about we're about welcoming friends and guests into our home as in call the restaurant and giving them an amazing experience it's kind of we're doing what we can right now and we're trying to deliver something special to them but i think we'll go back to definitely doing the restaurant but one of the big things we always say core is we're going to learn something we're going to develop the team. We're going to develop everything we do just by um, kind of doing this exercise, I suppose. Um, you know, you're kind of working out, you know, how much is it going to cost, uh, you know, um, doing the numbers. We, we keep saying doing the math, doing the math. The guys are turning around and they're producing large numbers of things, something that maybe they weren't or haven't done before. So it's kind of, again, something else they're learning, another skill. You know, they may in a couple of years time do something very much like when we had the royal wedding, you know, we were doing 250 covers and it's something we've never done before. So we had to lift that, do it differently, may you know, kind of deliver at that kind of volume. And it's now some of the team is being able to do right now. And from what we've experienced, I'm pretty sure everyone wants to get back out to restaurants. They want to get back to normality. I think everyone's going to come out of the uh, the lockdown, out of the blocks. They're going to be flying. They want to drink great wine in great restaurants. They want to socialise with friends. It's like, you know, everyone gets together at Christmas. Well, Christmas is going to be every week at the moment because it's catching up with friends. It's doing all the things that we love to do. And that's what hospitality is about, you know. And I'm really excited for when we come back because there's going to be a lot of people. I think also what's been great about this part of the lockdown is a lot of the guests and people that come to the restaurant have also they want that level of dining therefore they've started to research a bit more they've got a bit more time on their hands so they're looking at great meat producers vegetable producers all these kind of things are being really exciting for them you know that's what they've been doing so then coming back to the restaurants it's like they've gained a whole new level of knowledge and then the appreciation for what we do and how we put it on the plates of these guests and how we serve them is going to be really, really, you know, fantastic. I think they're going to be really, really excited. I don't think it will change it at all. I think we'll even more so. I think we'll, um, I think everyone has to realise that now coming out, again, like I said, everyone's gained a little bit more knowledge. Everyone's got that thirst for a little bit more. We will continue to do everything we want to do and do it at the highest level we can. 
And I think everyone in our industry should be inspired to do the same because we're in a really kind of opportune moment where we can either do what we did or a lot of places we can step it up a little bit more and make it that little bit more special. And as soon as you do that, guests will like, yeah, I'm coming out to that restaurant again. The thing is now with the way that COVID is, if you don't step up to the mark, you're going to be people again. Mm, I don't know if I'm going to go back there. And that's what we don't want to happen. We want everyone driving for the same cause, going out, eating, having an amazing time. Um, and that's what we're going to try and recreate. Everything that we try and do is the atmosphere of the restaurant. It's, but it's about the fun time, the, the great experience of eating out and the enjoyment of that. I think it will, it will change our industry a lot. I think some people, I think we've seen from this, actually have found this amazing positivity from it in the sense of they're actually doing better trade than they did when they're open as an actual restaurant. So I think that's a, a big part of it, looking at how that works for people. Some people have changed and have thought, wow, this is, you know, we're now doing 5,000 meals. We're doing them every day. People are really enjoying them. The price point's right. Sometimes that's what they should be doing. And that's, you know, that's great. You know, do that, do it at home, enjoy it. And then maybe they could spend that time and use that uh, kind of investment, the, the profit they were getting from those things and actually being able to do the thing that they wanted to do in the restaurant sense. Because I think that's really going to help people. Um, I see the future, we've got to go more on British produce. And British produce also has to come up, you know, to that mark as well. Because sometimes we've got amazing produce in the UK. Sometimes people are need to do a little bit more. And I think as soon as they realise that, that'll just open the doors. Because this country is full of beautiful produce, uh, um, everything, and the fish, the shellfish. And uh, like I said, really excited about seeing that more and more British on the menu let's kind of enjoy it let's talk about it hopefully with this time as well the connection with the suppliers has been increased people are able to research more in the chef sense and they're able to look at it and say okay I really like that let's talk to that person let's see what they're doing let's really increase our menu in that way One of the big things we always talk about is somewhere along the line people need to understand how much things cost um and like i said it for me it's you know it's movement forward we have to be pioneers of our own industry and our own future um if we're going to turn around and we wish to continue trying to do everything for the cheapest price because we think we're going to sell it it's the wrong attitude we've got to turn it around and say right here is spinach from bob who's made an amazing spinach this is how much it costs and if you don't want to pay it then don't go to the restaurant because that's not fair. It's not fair from a uh, public point of view to turn around and say, this is how much it's going to cost. And they say, well, I don't want to pay that. That doesn't work. We have to be the ones that move it forward. We have to say that. And that that's every part of our industry. And that's where kind of, I think it's really important that a lot of restaurants really step up to that and say, this is what it costs. And that's the produce. That's uh, whatever that may be. It's also the people in the industry. And that's what we need to do. And we need, we very much find it cool. We always want our chefs to be a certain way. We have a culture here that we try and make sure that they understand and therefore project to the wider audience of the public and also our industry that it's not, it's about giving ourselves value. It's having that value in ourselves and being saying, actually, I'm not just going to do that for nothing. I'm going to charge you what it's worth because if you work, like we said about the industry, a great industry to get into, you come into at a young age, you come in at 18, you spend 10, 15 years working at that industry before maybe you have your own restaurant or something like that. And then after that time, you say, oh, yeah, I'm going to do a lunch menu for £12.50. Well, if you're a lawyer and you work for 15 years and you work really hard and you do really well and you open your own law firm, you don't turn around and say, oh, I'm going to charge you £20 an hour. You don't do it you turn around and you charge a lot of money for your time because you've worked, because you've invested. And that, it, obviously, you have to deliver on that, of course, but that's where we need to be putting ourselves at the highest level.
look heavily into where our produce comes from, um, how they're farming, what their ethos is, who they are as people. And that's part of the love and the journey that we're all on and we really enjoy it. But also we, we also talk about sustainability. Everyone kind of uses it as a tagline um, all the time. And I think we, we try and stay away from the word, not because we don't believe in it, because we think there's more to it than just the symbol, oh, we're sustainable. Um, sustainability is not only in the produce and the way that you farm and things like that sustainability is making sure you're there in 20 years time so that you can actually support an area look after an infrastructure in that area um you know we work with nature in norfolk a lot outside um where i'm from and alan works there and he supplies he employs about 150 people and so he's employing he's looking after a group of people giving them jobs giving them a future um and we have to look at that and say yeah that's a sustainable business that really makes total sense and we have to look to that and we have to support it and we have to support one another as well i think the restaurant has grown um organically is one of the biggest changes that we've seen is changes that we've tried to instigate but We've seen it grow and through Claire's kind of guidance and management, the businesses kind of change from when we opened and it was, we opened and the great thing, which I love being part of is it's been opened on, you know, by someone, an individual. So Claire's opened it. I've been lucky enough to be part of it and we've grown the business. And so we didn't open with the most expensive crockery, cutlery, tables, anything like that. But what we have done is we've slowly made everything a little bit better i mean i'm sitting in our wine cellar here that we've just uh, created and we we did it with a builder and we worked on it together you know i sourced the wood for the table we talked about with rob with claire talking about what we want in it claire's got a massive passion for wine and so we filled it and it, it now is a wonderful place that we really enjoy to be part of and we've grown that and it's a connection to it and all the team have seen the change and that's how we've got then we invested in tables and we're always looking to make it better, the restaurant better, but also it's all about making it better for the guest. So that when they come in, it's something extra that they've got something new, something interesting. And that's what, you know, that's probably been our biggest change. And also the culture within the restaurant, something we, myself and Claire, really looked at when we came to decide how we wanted to run the restaurant. It's been a massive change in how we look after people, we work with people. It's, you know, it's, it's really enjoyable and we've got a fantastic team here. the um the best thing with that kind of team is we we look after them we want them to be part of what core is because they're the people that kind of see everyone every day also a big part of it we actually something i don't really look at enough but the the charity work that the team do so we get involved in a lot of local charities and they're all just kind of want to be part of it and that's an amazing thing to be part of a community. And since we've been in Notting Hill, we've been involved in a lot of events around Notting Hill and with the team. And it's been fantastic. Generally, when I was in France, I worked in a few restaurants and kind of visited a lot of restaurants. I had Chave, which was fantastic. Um, it was always seen as a really kind of solid, solid stove that was a really, really great piece of kit to work with. It looks stunning. Um, and then kind of we, we originally used Rorg at Restaurant Gordon Ramsay. Um, and we were looking at when we opened calls, so I said, what do we want to do? Where do we want to work? And, you know, Claire said, oh, you know, we, we think we're going to talk to Chave. And I said, well, that sounds great. Some of the stuff I've seen is fantastic. Um, and it was really interesting. We went into um, Cause Restaurant, what it was before, and they actually had a modular Chave stove here before we, before we opened. So... We worked with Chave and they took that and they refurbed it and used it somewhere. And then they've also been able to produce us this wonderful suite. And they, they worked with us. That was the great thing about it. Um, and they were able to produce something that now has, you know, produced huge amount of covers every week, every month, and now over three years. And, you know, it's stood the test of time. It's really got a strength to it. Um, and especially the service team who we work with, they're fantastic and they come in and they really work with us to achieve, you know, something that is really easy to use, I suppose. A 
I think, like I said, Bill Collar is a massive one. And what that when you work with the stove and when you hold it and you cook on it every day, you feel it. It's a presence. Um, it's solid. It's not when you put the pan down, it feels like it's there. It's really got some strength. Um, and also the quality of the burners, everything that's working on it, we, you know, we love to use. It's easy to use. We've had no issues at all with it over the past three years. So, yeah, it's been great. That's a big thing um, that I think we've actually had a, a Chave stove also put in our restaurant in Australia that we're going to be opening. Um, and the reason we chose it, and that was kind of like the continued of our stove that is at the moment. Um, there's certain kind of shelves I would elongate. There's certain things I would move around slightly, but we've been able to do that with the next version, which is in Australia. And a big part of it was integrating certain pieces of equipment, which was great, which is like the hot holding drawers, some water baths in there. Um, and then one of the other ones was power, power inside. And I mean like power points. So inside there's a lot of plugs, um, um, and it also has um, kind of integrated pieces of equipment that are a little bit different. So whether that's um, kind of dehydrators that are built inside, hot holding uh, cupboards, things like that have made a big difference. Um, I mean, we use gas at the moment. Um, I think a lot of people, there's always a want to do whatever you want. But you also have to understand to be that realistic. And when we came to core there, we were looking at different options. And also we were we had to work within our environment. And so the building that we came into, there wasn't enough power to work anything but gas. Actually, by having the gas, it's really been great for us. We love using it. Um, I think also with our cooking, we have inductions around the kitchen. We also use the sous vide based cooking. Um, I think all of it has its own place. Um, I think, you know, we have the gas because that's what we're using right now and we work with it and we love it and we enjoy it. But I'm not saying that induction wouldn't be great because we use that elsewhere for different tasks. I definitely think from kind of cause perspective and something I think that everyone's kind of moving towards now is very much the finish of a stove. Um, there's lots of different materials that are being used to put on the final tops and things like that, which will really integrate stoves and make them um, really quite special. I mean, we, we went over to uh, see Chave um, and that was an amazing experience to be part of the kind of the birth of the stove, as it were, um, and also see the scale of the, uh, the manufacturing system that they have there. Um, my uh, my parents or my father is a, a stainless steel engineer and so going there was very much like going into a workshop that I've been into a lot um, but also going around to look at it you know touch it feel it I think there's a there's such a connection with that that you're able to actually come up with ideas just by being there and if you then whether they're right or wrong you can throw out some different questions to the people who are building it shaping it and then therefore, you know, maybe create something that's really special. I think for everyone, like say up and down the country, it's very much um, optimism, um, excitement, because people want to into, um, get involved with the restaurants, their local restaurants, um, food as a whole, because they've, you know, that's the big thing that's connected everyone, even in this period. And I think the excitement is now come out, reopen the restaurants, give 110% and enjoy it. Um, enjoy that interaction, enjoy the great produce. We've got a time when we're coming through to you know, this time of Brexit and so on, that kind of thing. And we can look at it and go, oh, it's going to be really hard. Or we can say, wow, actually, maybe these suppliers, maybe they'll produce more for us. Maybe they'll work with us more. You know, maybe we'll get a bit more of that shellfish and maybe it will, you know, will in, you know, create something very special with these people. And, you know, I think that's huge. And also, you know, with the way the race has come, we've hopefully will inspire a young generation of British, um, you know, um, cooks to come forward because there's, you know, for anyone saying there's not the opportunities, there definitely is now. There's not so much people coming over from Europe. It's a lot more difficult that so they can come through and, you know, really make this amazing career. You know, Claire in the restaurant achieving two Michelin stars as an English person. That's fantastic. And it should be something that really drives everyone.
Hi, and uh, welcome to the uh, the Charve Chef Talk. I think we've got Johnny somewhere, um, hopefully uh, be able to come on live. So if there's any questions that anyone has for Johnny, um, then uh, feel free. Um, I'm hoping Johnny is still around somewhere. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you. Can you hear Yeah. Um, so yeah, so um, well, th thank you, so, first of all, so much for, uh, for, for taking part in this uh, first ever Chef's Talk for, uh, for Charve. Um, obviously, it's been a, a very busy couple of couple of weeks, couple of months for you with uh, what's been going on. So uh, I know the time out to, to record the video and, and do the interview was um, was uh, much appreciated by all the team at Charvet. No, it's um, nice. uh, it was an absolute pleasure. Yeah. So in terms of obviously, you covered a lot there in terms of what's been kind of going on over the last kind of uh, few months. Um, I know you're a little bit late onto this call. You're probably not able to say too much as to, to why, but you know what? What? How, how can we kind of take take things forward in terms of what we discussed in the interview? In terms of what the what the future plans are for for you guys at the moment? Um, I think everyone just needs um, to get excited. I think it's really. I think it's very much some of the answers I gave on the interview. Um, coming out of this, we're all looking to firstly get into restaurants as soon as they can open outside, wherever that may be. And for us, uh, we're already, all of the team here have started booking restaurants in London, supporting restaurants that can open outside just to give them a, a kickstart. And then the moment that all restaurants can open inside, it's really making sure that we deliver and give an amazing experience and enjoy what we're doing. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I mean, obviously we've, we've, we've run some polls kind of while your interview was running and, uh, you know, it's, it's quite interesting to see some of the some of the results in terms of what people are thinking in terms of optimism. And I think, you know, one of the things that we discussed a lot when we when we chatted with in the interview was kind of that positivity about going forward, isn't it? So it's it's hoping that, you know, once everyone's, uh, you know, allowed to reopen that, you know, it's a case of using this time and, and, and building on what, what, what you've been able to kind of do behind the scenes while uh, while you've not been able to have the restaurant open. Yeah, a lot of part of that is very much in development in ourselves, in our techniques, in our structures, everything that we do um, has been a big part of that. And we are never going to get that time again. So for us, it's been it's been quite refreshing, quite, um, quite enjoyable. Um, but then now we know what we love. We know what we love to do. Um, some of our team are trying to come in every day, even though we're not even open to just try and be here because they want to be here. They want to progress themselves. They want to move things forward. And that's fantastic for us. And we're really happy about it. No, brilliant. So we've got a quick question here. So Gary's asking, um, so what, what are future bookings looking like? Has the, uh, since the announcement last week, have the, uh, has the booking system kind of gone into meltdown? We Yes, it has, but we're also trying to kind of manage it. We have a lot of regular guests, so we're trying to uh, allocate spaces to them first, and then we'll open the bookings up fully um, when we have a little bit more information because we don't want to over egg it when we don't know for sure if we're going to be able to open or not on said date by the government. But as soon as we know for sure, we'll open the book up fully and then we can't wait. Fantastic. Yeah, no, fingers crossed. So uh, there's another question there, Harry. Um, what, what do you personally look for in a dining experience? So you personally, what when, when you're looking to event, you know, get that rare occasion away from the kitchen? So uh, what, what are you looking for in terms of a dining experience? Fun, fun, relaxed, great, enjoyable food. Um, it's kind of and great service. Um, I think that's one of the things, especially for me, is sometimes maybe as chefs and things we forget about the service and the service is one of the most important things. Um, so delivering that and like I said, this is part of when we come back and reopen is we need to deliver, we need to make sure it's amazing and that's all I look for. I look to have a good time when I go out. Um, the thing is with a lot of accolades and things, they don't guarantee a good time. So if I can get that every time I go out, that's what we need. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, moving on, uh, Ian. So, what what would Johnny like, uh, the, or the proposed hospitality minister, to achieve? So, bearing, you know, if, if we do get, uh, you know, the, the the movement is very much kind of in in the direction that um, everyone wants a hospitality minister. If one was appointed, what what would you think was the the highest thing on the agenda in your mind? Um. I think this is a very hard job to start with to be able to kind of span the breadth of our industry from one side to the other. Um, but for me, I think they really need to know and speak to every different business to understand fully what everyone needs. Um, I think we had a, there was a 
chat that the minister did with Gordon the other day, um, and by all accounts, they edited it very harshly. But um, what the big thing for me was is we all need to, like a lot of people with their landlords has been a real issue. Um, and that's the thing that needs to be addressed and taken up. Um, you know, it, it, they need to serve the entire industry. They need to really know their numbers, know where things have been kind of gone wrong and where we can move things forward. I think a big thing for me is that hospitality minister is understanding and trying to push an incentive for the general public to understand how much everything costs. Um, and I think that's a big thing that they need to convey to the wider public. Um, and that's and that's not so much produce. That's more about the people that work in our industry because they're the most important for me because you can't have any business without the people that work in it. And even with the new regulation, well, the new um, minimum wage coming in, you can see when you look at it, you know, the salaries that need to be paid to every single cook, front of house, every single person. And if you just did that math um, and worked it out on that, then like I said the price of hospitality needs to go up and we need to, you know, people need to understand the value of that. Yeah, sure. So, so, so on the same kind of, you know, you mentioned uh, in the interview earlier about kind of doing the maths and doing the maths. Um, got a question here from Michael in terms of how, how can you guys keep control of the numbers, meaning obviously the, the money side of things, especially moving forward with expanding so far away. So I guess that's alluding to the, uh, the new restaurant in Australia. So how, how easy is it going to be to, to manage that? Um, as in the costs? Yeah, I guess so. Um, I think you, for me, we, you know, we'll work, we try and work from the cost of everything and that includes the staff. And then we work it out of what a meal would cost. Um, and we, you know, the, even just the increase on staff percentages, um, or what they've increased from, because for me, it's like two years. It's not only, you know, people have got on that two years older, all of our staff, everything's gone up. So the percentage increase of the, wages has to be then reflected in a percentage increase on the price of the menu um you know it's like you know the rents have gone up everything's gone up yet we will try and do something for the lowest cost it's not where we need to be we need to price things accordingly and that is something that needs to happen across the board across the entire board because if we don't then what happens is one person's charging you know 30 pounds for um you know three courses and someone else is charging 100 pounds it needs to be a little bit more um, transparency across that. And, you know, the, and the big people need to answer for that as well. People like the Ivy Group, they really need to step up and, you know, work out what those costs are there. You know, that's where it really needs to be hard hitting. And do, and do, you, think that, do you think that's achievable to kind of get, you know, how, how easy is that going to be to kind of get a lot of the operate, operators, whether it be on an independent level or, group level to to kind of fall into that kind of that harmony that you know that's how they're looking at approaching kind of their offer in terms of from a from a price point of view do you think it's achievable or do you think it's always going to be a bit of a a, a bit of a, a struggle to, to kind of get everyone on the same page with that again i think it's messaging um you know what what is the messaging again coming back to the minister the messaging that's coming across what you're actually getting um, I think I was listening to an article the other day about uh, a clothing brand that was basically um, even kind of paying very like, small wages for people to producing their garments and then but selling them for really cheap and a lot of people turned around and sort of said oh would you support slave labor or would you support people not working for the great money and everyone said no 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 yet the company then boasted huge sales um, because people decided to do it. It's kind of the same thing as food. We can't, we have to put out those messages. And when I look at people I know, maybe my kind of generation's older than me, and we talk about how much a meal costs, and they go, oh, what do you mean? Can't cost that much. Food can't cost that much. I always like to then put it back to their own industry and say to them, you know, what would, say, if, I don't know, you were an interior designer, what would you charge for your time? then for the product, then and you work it out and they go, Jesus Christ, yeah, I understand where you're coming from. And that's a big education on it. You know, if you look at where some of these places, um, chain restaurants are buying their products from, they're getting pallets delivered in from halfway across the world because it's dirt cheap and they've been draw, straw, trawled off the ocean floor. And it's like, how does that work? We just need to, we need to look at those things and everyone understand them. And then, you know, not be shocked when something is of high value and it costs a lot of money that 
it's okay because that's what you're paying for. Um, so just moving on, I've got a couple of more questions come through. Um, so yeah, just kind of going back to uh, Australia and, and the restaurant. Um, I know that was one of the reasons why you, you're on a, on a call. So you, you joined us when you, when you could, so appreciate that. Um, have you got an opening date? Have you got any kind of timeframes? Um, not quite yet. We're working sort of uh, obviously this year. Um, we hope to be opening uh, as soon as we can. We don't have a finalised date yet. Um, I think it's more about when we can get over there is the biggest issue at the moment, but we cannot wait and it's going to be really exciting when we get there. We can't wait to great spot. Okay, great. Fantastic. Watch this space, in other words. Um, uh, another question. So uh, people seem to find it easy to blame the hospitality sector for the quick spread of COVID. Um, is this something that you worry about when the sector reopens? No, I don't think so. If you look at the data, you look at things, it's it's their tagline for why things are caused. But we all know from the from even from the data why that is. We can see it. Um, but I think we can either get hung up on it and get upset about it or we deal with it and we move on. It's kind of, it's not going to change that fact at all. So. No, yeah, I think, uh, I think there's definitely, there's other, other contributing factors there. And I think, uh, you know, hospitality sector does seem to have been uh, made somewhat of a, a bit of a scapegoat in that, in that respect, but um, there you go. Um, Svetlana, who I believe is in, in France. Uh, hi, Johnny, what will, uh, what will be your next challenge uh, and, and project? Obviously you've got, Australia, which I'm, I'm guessing is probably taking up a, a fair chunk of your time, but uh, any, any, anything else that you know, you, you're able to share with us in the pipeline? Um, obviously, we're always looking for um, new projects, new things to do, but one of the big things at the moment is we've got to reopen and we want to reopen in an amazing way. Um, that's where our, our main focus is, the restaurant in London. Um, as soon as you know, we're happy with that and we want to constantly um, kind of evolve that restaurant and become better at what we do every day um and then we just you know we don't know what the next thing is but we're always looking for it so um i have just got jump on another call um unfortunately so if there's any a couple of last questions if we just say two more and then we'll go yeah i think we've, we've pretty much I'm, I'm just waiting see if anyone wants to kind of post anything last before we before you need to go um but yeah no well just well just to see if there's any anything else comes through just very quickly so um yeah i just want to say you know thank thank you for, for the interview and thanks for uh, i know I all i speak on behalf of all the the guys at Shave who really appreciate your support and obviously kind words in terms of the the products and so on um so yeah really thanks for for being part of this first first ever chef's uh, chef talk by Shave and um, just quickly before we go um uh harry which which restaurants are you most excited oh, um firstly are you most excited to dine in again in london uh firstly is just thank you for letting us be involved in this it was great to be part of it and we do love the movie yeah Chave product um can't wait to get cooking on it um for me when we open up one of the big ones now is andrew wong i oh, can't wait to go back there for bendham um restaurant gordon ramsay hopefully i can get to um it depends on uh, on opening days and things but yeah, just want to get back out and just enjoy being out again. That's uh, the exciting thing. Yeah, I think you speak for everyone in, uh, in in that respect. So, well, again, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Pleased that you're able to kind of make it uh, onto the call. And um, yeah, uh, take it easy and, and thank you. Thank Thanks you very, very much. much. Take care. Bye-bye. Right. Yes. Bye-bye.